Welcome back to episode 106 of the Disorganized Wizard Club podcast. My name is Alex, and here as always with Adam. Hello. And Cam. Happy to be here. And we're a group of Ottawa-based players that play just about anything and everything we can qualify for. We talk about decks, tournament stories, just about anything to help you and ourselves get better at magic. Hopefully. First DWC. time ever, happy to be here. It's yeah. The, it's the D- <laughs> yeah. We're on an uptick. Thanks for having me, the DWC. <laughs> <laughs> Got a lot to talk about today, you know, real excited. Yeah. It's going to be a good old show. Another DWC after dark. Yeah. It's pretty late. Well, yeah. they're all after dark since it's winter in Canada now. Right. It's true, yeah. It's just dark all the time. Yeah. Yeah. It's 24-hour darkness up here. Oh, it's the dark ages. <laughs> winter has come. Hey, but we're just a positive light and force in the universe of magic the gathering. <laughs> daylight savings time ended, and now we're not saving any daylight. Just, exactly. we're, putting, we're keeping it all in a safe. We're the immortal sun. Until summer, and then we let all the light out. It romps around for six months, <laughs> and then we capture it. Yeah, it's free range light, <laughs> ethical light. <laughs> oh man, we got a lot to talk about this week. There was a modern GP, Wizard Tower 2K Open was this past weekend. Mm-hmm. We both played in. Yeah, local pro tour. Yep, that was fun. I missed a ninth on Breakers. <laughs> yeah, I heard, heard you were pretty choked. Yeah, we had the same record. Yeah, same record, lost in the exact same rounds. I missed on ninth. He finished fifth. <laughs> yep. Yeah, huge rip. Yeah. yeah I heard you, were, you, you were a pod two drafter, though, so. I yeah. love how you guys, I heard the story that, because we had a, part, a Halloween party at our house that night. Yeah. <laughs> and I got home, people were telling me a story about uh, you and uh, I can't remember who else were like, let's go. Like, I don't want to play, because they, they split top eight. They split the prize. Yeah. Yeah. And then I can't play like, the no. points. Yeah, I can't. I was like, I'm out here trying to dream crush to keep people out. Because he's like, if I win, people don't get into player of the year. He's like, I'm out here trying yeah, to dream I'm crush. I'm auto qualified for player of the year. So I just got to keep people out of my tournament. <laughs> no, Cam Cam just really. This is Ross. Cam got paired against the guy who beat me in the last round and get, knocked me out of top vengeance. eight. So Cam got vengeance for me and smashed him. Yeah, I heard it was you guys were out of there about five minutes yeah, after that. Absolutely smashed him. He loves to see it. <laughs> Just out here making sure no one can play against him in his own tournament. Two yeah. spirit number one champion. <laughs> it's gonna stay that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a fun tournament. I played Abzan. You played Mono Red. Mm-hmm. Put our li- our lists up in the Discord before uh, before the tournament. Well, you put your list that both of like we have both been playing Abzan separately, and you yeah. put the list you were playing up. Cam just linked. <laughs> <laughs> the winning list from the GP in Europe for yeah. his list, his deck list. That's what I, well, so I played the GP Lil list, had four treasure maps on the board and three fight with fire. I played in true Brad Nelson fashion, three treasure maps and four fight with fire due to card availability issues. <laughs> <laughs> you filthy net decker. Uh, yeah. Actually, never mind. Totally original idea. You changed some cards. Yeah, exactly. King so, of, so, King innova- of so innovative. How did your you. how did your rounds go with mono red? Uh, they were for the most part really easy. Um, I so I chose to play mono red because people had been telling me that they're it has a good matchup against Jeskai control, various flavors of control, and especially Drakes. And I expected there to be a lot of that based on which cards people had asked me to borrow. <laughs> I got <laughs> requests. Thing. I got requests to borrow Arclight Phoenixes and Charter Courses and I think Blue Red Lands and a Star of Extinction, which is only in Jeskai control. So like a number of things indicated this to me. And I knew that those archetypes were also popular on the tower. And I was right. It was like 70% of the room were those two decks. Yeah, honestly, I think there were only two green black decks in the room of 36 people. Yeah, it's surprising. Yeah, just yeah, ton of Jeskai mirrors of various flavors, as was Gateway or not. Bunch of people playing Drakes. Yeah. Uh, the Drakes matchup is really easy. <laughs> but you just sort of yes. play things for the first three turns and attack them, and then they put it. They like finally develop a Drake or two, but they can't attack or they'll die on the crackback, and then you just burn them out. Yeah. Um, and the control is control matchup also pretty easy. Like they're not really playing Settler Wreckage or anything, so you just get to attack them and slowly burn them out. Um, yeah, Frenzy goes a long way. Yeah, if you ever get to resolve a Frenzy, like you get to like just freely overcommit so that they tap out to Clarion you so that you can resolve Frenzy. Yeah. Um, and then it just reloads and goes. But my one loss was to Jeskai because my experiments did not work. <laughs> it was like... Had a few failed fired. ones. <laughs> uh, like one game one, and then... Game two brought in Fight with Fires because they all put in Lyra. Resolved a Frenzy on four after it got Clarion. All according to plan. Looked, it's a land on top. Pass. Draw that land for my turn. It's a Fight with Fire on top. 
There's no targets. I can't cast it. Pass. Then the next turn, have to draw the fight with fire after they play the Lyra. <laughs> Feels bad, man. Uh, and then, yeah, just similar issues, game three. But that was my one loss. My other loss was in draft and then got to top eight in fifth. Yeah. Monored also won the tournament. Yeah, but was a friend it, of the show, Jonathan Rowe, yeah. who should be at the PT this weekend, right? He will be at the PT this weekend, I believe. Yeah, it's a lot of people from Ottawa. Yeah. ABJ, but all was, guests on this show. If you come on this show, you then qualify for the Pro Tour. We've discussed this. Yes, that's why I'm happy to be here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, John was playing Risk Factors in his Mono Red deck. Yeah. Which he said were absolutely incredible. Big, big, big X to doubt on that one. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I, li- I like, yeah, I just don't buy it. I could, like, I'm hesitant to believe him. Oh, man, he's going to flame me for saying this. <laughs> but like, I feel like he's subject here to confirmation bias because he won the tournament. So he's hitting us with the hashtag scoreboard lo- like strat for hey, logic. He and went, also he went absolutely undefeated. I know. And also I can't rounds. really argue. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I just want to say there's no way. So, but at the same time, I mean, maybe he's right. I just hate that card. I think it could be really, really good against just guy and Riggs because it's this like your early creatures hit them down or whatever. And then, you have to burn them out the rest of the way. And yeah. that card does that very well. I mean, yeah. either by burning them or drawing you burn. And if that's all the matchups he played, then yeah, it would look incredible. Yeah. I played a red mirror where I was not playing risk factor. My opponent was. I just took eight as they did nothing and couldn't answer my board. And they took more than four per turn because they weren't developing. So like in red mirrors, it's trash. But Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's contextual. I'll buy that. And he definitely chose the right deck for the day. Yeah. So yeah, I guess in, in those matchups like against Drakes where you literally describe the matchup as you hit them a few times and then burn them out when they develop a Drake. Yeah, it looks awesome. I could see the same thing with Jeskai because you tax their control and then you experimental frenzy. So yeah, yeah it seems excellent in those matchups. I buy that for sure. Yeah. You know, plays well in some ways with experimental frenzy. True. Yeah, I played, so I played Abzan. I've been working on like various Abzan and green black lists for a while and uh, Cam Cam said he's like yeah I expect there's going to be a lot of control in Drakes I'm like well if there's going to be a lot of Drakes I need to find like a legitimate plan against them because that matchup isn't good and the answers most green black decks are running are just Necrotic Wound or Death Court Scavenger which we talked about last week why they're not good and Dead Eye Tracker is unplayable so you don't want to play that so there wasn't really just a good plan I found within green black do it And Necrotic Wound is fine, but it's just so situational and a lot of the times just doesn't kill anything because your creatures don't die in that matchup. And if they do, they're getting Lava Coiled. Yeah, that was my concern. Yeah, there's so many games where you just have one creature in your graveyard and then your removal spell does nothing. Yeah, well, to clarify, yeah, for last week what we talked about was Death Court Scavenger doesn't play well against the Drake deck because they bring the Drake back or the Arc Light Phoenix back the same turn they put it in their graveyard. Yeah. That Death Gorge is just not a really good game plan. And also in the green black mirrors, you know, you get one thing and then you gotta you're gonna have to chump attack if you want to get a second thing. And that's also not good enough in the green black mirrors. I don't know, Dead Eye Tracker is maybe unplayable versus Drake's, but I think versus Green Black Mirrors, it's still very good. Yeah. I don't know. I've never been really impressed with it the times I've tried it. But yeah, it better than Scavenger. Death Gorge Scavenger. Definitely yeah. better than Death yeah. Gorge Scavenger because of the way it sets things up. But yeah, I think they're just better sideboard cards generally. Yeah, so anyway, I wanted to set myself up with a good post-board plan, and I was just like, oh, there's nothing I can do, and then it kind of just dawned on me. I'm like, yeah, I'm just I'm playing white for a reason. I just add white cards to my sideboard and play seal aways, which is like a cheap interaction spell that gets everything, and they can never get off the board against Drake, so it's absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah, it's really good there. Yeah, and I went 3-1 in standard, and then 2-1 in... Uh, draft X1 in every format, <laughs> the guarantee. Um, going 5 2, I think it feels bad, man. Yeah, it was X1 going in the last round, got paired down, lost, and ninth on breakers. That's big I knew it was going to happen too. It was brutal. But um, if it was me, I would have got in on those breakers. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, my, my breakers weren't very good the entire tournament. Um, Did you lose round one? No, I lost round two. Hmm. That yeah. doesn't help either. Yeah. I mean, I guess you just played against bad opponents. 
<laughs> um, what did you end up drafting? Uh, Demir. How many fake news? Zero. Oh, rip. How many whisper agent? One. That's Ooh. pretty good. Yeah. How many yeah. snitch? Zero. Ooh. Mm. Wait, what was in your deck? Thought Three Bound Fairy Flying ha- Hexproof. Ah. Uh. Oh, okay. I feel probably pretty good. I feel pretty good. Oh, so just mythic and rares. And three, three artful takedowns, oh, two deadly good. visits, a uh, bunch of flyers. I still don't know how I feel about deadly visit. Artful takedowns really good. Yeah. Deadly visit's fine. You know what I mean? It it seems like it should just be nuts in this format, right? But it's yeah. not. Yeah, Because fine. the best deck is Boros. Yeah. yeah. Just trading five mana for a healer hawk feels bad. Yeah, my de- my deck was fine. Um, it wasn't like spectacular. It was missing a few like key good cards, like disinformation campaign and Watcher the Mist. I didn't have either of those cards. Yeah, Watcher's like the whole reason to be in Dominion. Yeah, but the the deck was still good. Yeah, Started I mean, Arful Takedown is like incredible. Yeah, and then I just kind of like stumbled, and my opponent had very good aggressive draws on me in the last round, and I died. Yeah, yeah. I'm a big fan of Demir when it gets to be full on synergy. That I think is when the deck is its scariest yeah. and just completely unbeatable. Yeah. I think it's the best deck in the format when it gets that. But it's so hard to get those pieces because they're all uncommons. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> but if you get the like Thoughtbound Phantasm, Whispering Snitch, Whisper Agent Start, right? Like those are your first three turns, the game's over. Yeah. A little bit of drain, a little bit of gain, a little bit of scry, pump this guy. Basically, Tarmogoyf at that point. Yeah, I, did, I just killed guys with flyers. 3-1 yeah, yeah, yeah. flyers and 3-3 three, three hexproof flyers. Yeah, I mean, Nightfell Predator is just... Yeah. That card is just so unrealistic. Yeah, it was good. But uh, it was a fun tournament. I love playing that tournament. It yeah, was a good time. I'm bummed I missed it. shouldn't have stayed up late for Worlds. <laughs> but I just wanted to watch League Worlds, which was dumb because the finals sucked. <laughs> so it was waste of my weekend actually screw up my whole sleep schedule yeah, i was actually miserable i was just i'm just brutal yeah that's the blow yeah <laughs> all the week right there that i was and then i ended up you know on saturday sleeping to like 6 p.m <laughs> you know because yeah. i was up all night until like world started 4 a.m you know mm-hmm. jeez yeah i was planning to pptq on the sunday and then i slept through it feeling but a bit I, rough i feeling a little rough but <laughs> I didn't realize we had the extra hour of time. Oh, so you could have. So I, I probably could have yeah. if I'd actually set an alarm. <laughs> yeah, I was also ended up just staying up super late with Wenzel jamming a bunch of arena drafts, being a law abiding citizen. Yeah, <laughs> I tried to join them, but I was pretty tuckered. He was just fell asleep. Firm <laughs> tuckered. <laughs> had a little too much pop and chips the night before. Yeah, no, uh, that night. Just socializing responsibly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it was socialized. that night at like three in the yeah. morning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then Wintel and I were like, "Let's get in this," yeah. and then went to pass on the chair beside me too. So I was just up drafting alone. But <laughs> just some good just, wholesome socializing. Just stepping over dead socializing. bodies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Every yeah, literally just everyone down for the count. I'm just stepping over him to go get some snacks. Um, yeah. What did you What did you end up drafting? Uh, so I think I first picked True Fire Captain. Yeah, reasonable. Second picked Inescapable Blaze. And then two picks later got uh, there was not much in the uh, inescapable blaze pack. Two picks later got like a sky knight legionnaire. Oh yeah! And so I was like, you know, there are some people at this table who like playing aggressive decks, but sky knight legionnaire not being picked in four people. I'm pretty sure Boros is open. Boros was not open <laughs> again. <laughs> um, so yeah, the ending seven to eight cards of every pack at the table was just like mono green and blue cards again. Um, someone had a Nuts Boros deck, but it wasn't me. So it took a bit of a pivot. Took some Selesnia Guild Gates, uh, some green cards. Ended up playing like a Vivid Revival Naya Gold Cards deck. Because I got a March of the Multitudes. <laughs> oh yeah, March is unbeatable though. And getting that back with Vivid Revival is pretty good. That is nuts. Uh that is actually hype. And so I had like a Healer Hawk, a Goblin Banneret, a Sky Knight Legionnaire, <laughs> a Vivid Revival, some Sworn Companions and like Locks It On Restores and a True Fire Captain and like some other big green thing. And, you know, just all over the strategic circle. Yeah. Uh, two one? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and like the two Not one. Bad. That's was, pretty good for the, that monster. The two one was really close. It was game three of round three that I was going to win with March, but my opponent drew their fine finality. And yeah. left himself with like a four or something while I was at like 25 from March life. And then I drew Prey Upon Land Land and died. 
Uh, yeah. But like, I still had a vivid revival so in my deck. Th- I still had other O. creatures. Oh, it was like super close. If yeah. I draw a vivid revival, I three O. If I draw a bunch of stuff. Oh, wow, that's wild. Yeah. The nonsense coming together. Okay. Yeah. So I have a theory about this set. Like Arena really sort of, I think, skewed a lot of people's perception about Boros in draft. In paper, man, the people that go for it just get ranched. It's so hard to guarantee a good Boros deck in paper because people aren't just going to let you have it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then from like a, you know, crab bucket perspective here. <laughs> I played against a very good Boros deck. He had like double. Two two first strike guys on home stalwart. Oh, that card's really good. Bunch of hawks, bunch of like other good mentor things. Skylight Legionnaires, guard for battles. Like he was at our table. He got. He's the reason no one else had good Boros. Uh, he was just in the right seat. Yeah, that yeah. happens. That's gonna happen. Beat but, him though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that like it's funny you say you went into Naya. I think green white actually though, like the Celestia deck has the best Boros matchup in draft. Because, I just kept playing Loxodon restores. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that card is obnoxiously good against them. Yeah, you can just like convoke out a two four, like a four four, pretty yeah. early, and you they, just that's done. it. Yeah, yeah. Whereas every other deck, like the mirror deck, is like, oh crap. Yeah, <laughs> this guy's like, shit. You have a three three mentor, right? This Guess guy's, I'll die. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's going to mentor. You know what I yeah. mean? Whereas because the green black deck all has one threes as blockers, right? It doesn't yeah. have a lot of good guys for defense. Whereas yeah. you, have the, does. you have the one four uh, three drop, but yeah, right. Like you play like, the one four, and you're yeah. like, oh. Yeah, it's okay versus every other deck, but against Boros, it's awful. Man, you board that. Yeah, if you listen to our episode last week, <laughs> if you are playing um, versus a Boros sort of uh, mentor deck, you probably want to board out the Demir Spy Agent or whatever it's called. What's it called? The what? The one four. Oh, the, uh, the blue card. The oh, three mana one four. Demir informant. Yeah. You probably want to board that card out versus Boros mentor decks because it doesn't block. <laughs> it doesn't block anything because if they're mentoring you're just losing value every time yeah. they like card is not good like if they play a uh, Boros Captain you're just toast if that's what your draw is so that card every time I play like a Tamir deck and I play against a Boros deck I board that card out because every time I draw it I lose it just doesn't do anything yeah so gotta board got, those cards out I got my Boros opponent at this tournament the guy with the nuts deck by boarding in a pause for reflection. Yeah, yeah. So Cam listened to our episode. You know, that's why he's happy to yeah. be here. Yeah. Having it, listened to our episode last week about sideboarding and limited. Yeah. Having paid attention to some of the things I said and others here said. Because <laughs> uh, I saw a Cosmotronic Wave, which is pretty good against March of the Multitudes and like can just punk you out. But it can't punk you out if you have a fog in your hand. And then you can probably just kill him on the crackback. And he didn't Cosmotronic Wave me. But it did let me, like, I would have had to chump block to lose creatures and not die. But instead, I got to keep all my creatures and then kill him. (laughs) People with fog in 2018. Wow. What a world. (laughs) Isn't it a convoke fog? Yeah. Yeah. I also listened to our episode from last week and against my round two opponent in the draft, a Selesnian dude, he just like had a bunch of big fatties to convoke out. I just boarded in up to four, three, one, four drop bats and. Killed him game three just by like playing two flyers and get him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it it's great. almost like sideboarding and limited yeah. is free wins, right? Yeah. Yeah. I just, that play, episode, I just play two flyers and he died. Yeah. I actually think that episode from last week is maybe one of the most important episodes we've done because of the amount people don't sideboard and don't really realize. Like, wait. It's, yeah. It was a topic that like personally I hadn't thought enough about or done a lot. Like that episode was has been very helpful to me. That one in the patience episode. Yeah, patience episode and that one are really useful for yeah. people, I think, to go listen to because they're they're things that are non intuitive for players. I think you know people just don't think about their limited decks that way, and I always, you know I always do. And mm-hmm. talking about how the amount of free wins you get with it, you know, you just it was easy, right? Like yeah, I did it in like was playing Boros versus Boros on Arena. Uh, brought in a Candlelight Vigil and a Maniacal Rage. Put them both on Healer Hawks. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's one of the best ones. But I my do that opponent. All the time. Went hawk, sun home stalwart, sun home stalwart, hawk, hawk, hawk. <laughs> so I had two, I had like a four, four hawk and a five, four hawk, and he had like four, four, four hawks. <laughs> and neither of us are blocking because the other one both has like sure strike and we're both like trying to get the life back. <laughs> I think we each took like over a hundred that game. Did you win? Yeah. Nice. Got him. Because I played around sure strike and then he finally did it once I had a pump spell and then I killed him. Not bad. <laughs> Oh, but yeah, it was just hawk versus hawk. It's like all these other mentor creatures were just like on the ground cheering for the birds. 
Thanks, Larry Angel, man. What a card. <laughs> That's such a good card. Yeah, I mean, that card's you know, standard play now. What do you want? <laughs> is it actually? Is it in the White Weenie deck? Yeah. It is. Yeah. Alongside Rustwing Falcon. I saw someone have a Rustwing Falcon in play, but not a Healer Hawk. Yikes. Yeah. <laughs> Big yikes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Better against Chain Whirly. <laughs> All these, yeah. all these just <laughs> brutal like weenie decks coming in to beat up on Drakes. That's the only reason why. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah, so funny. But uh, yeah, no, that that sort of limited approach matters a lot. Also, for people you know wondering or worrying about how to beat the borrow stack. Um, for people curious listeners, just a tip for people: if you want to beat the borrow stack, the Celestia deck is one of the best approaches. And you just windmill slam the three mana three three centaur that gains everyone. Yep. Um, oh, yeah. Life. Three life, right? Yep. Four. Four, four. sorry. Yeah. The three mana, three, three that gains everyone four. You just, oh, Cam and I did yeah. a draft where we had four. We had four Centaur Peacemakers and three locks it on Restores, and then just a bunch of other like green, white, splash, black matter. nonsense. You just don't lose to, <laughs> yeah. right? Like our bond was like, no, yeah. we don't. What do we splash for again? Uh, Swarm Guild Mage, Status Statue, a couple other things. Yeah, reasonable for Status Statue for sure. Swarm mm-hmm. Guild Mage is pretty good. Yeah, also gains life. You also, just sit around casting yeah, locks on the stars, yeah. tapping that to gain two. Yeah, so that's how you do it. That 3-3 three, three just chumps, like, or sorry, um, invalidates their whole you know board on the ground, gains yeah. four, it's, and then locks it on Restore is just a 3-4 they have a huge problem with. So, yeah, the green-white deck I don't think is great versus Demir because you have a really hard time beating a disinformation campaign. <laughs> like a single disinformation campaign yeah. is green-white. You're like, well, <sighs> shit. That was a good game. They like <laughs> your best cards like three fours. You play like they play a watcher and you're like, well, <sighs> they still have a million cards in disinformation campaign. <laughs> yeah. like, green-white, it feels so bad. You know, you really got to sideboard and think about ways to beat. I'm not sure. I haven't played it enough. That matchup in limited, but I think the, the way to look at limited is sort of like this about. I think maybe we're on the cusp of really grasping a high level of limited, you know, and explaining it that you need to think about it in matchups, archetypes, matchups, how you would sideboard, what cards you need to put together in order to win those matchups. Yeah. How am I supposed to come up with a sideboard guide if I don't know what cards are going to be in my deck, Adam? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you take fog and then you fog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can't, putting Candlelight Vigil on Hawk, though, definitely something you should be looking for. Yeah, big fan of that. Yeah, big fan. Yeah. I'm, ex- I'm excited to see how the drafts go at the, the Pro Tour. Yeah, for sure. See if a lot of people just end up fighting over certain cards. or Yeah, I mean, I gonna... imagine you just... Someone's going to have to play Golgari at the table. I think at the PT, like most competitive drafts, you just stay open as much as you can for packs on your right. I feel you like, don't worry about yeah. too much to your left. I think it's a mistake in drafting in a lot of cases like that to worry about what's coming back in pack two because one and three are what matter. Yeah, I think pros especially, like... If they agree that Boros is the best deck and they all say that they want to be in Boros, if that's where we're at, I think you might see like most people at the table take like a red white card kind of speculatively early, but they will be super fast to jump ship if they don't get like a good follow up because yeah. they'll know that it's a train wreck. They'd have tried it. Yeah. Hmm. I think you just dead weight overall. Yeah. That Honestly, too. I would just first pick dead weight. So would I. Yeah. Just cards are great. Yeah. Just beat Boros and also just everything else. <laughs> it's card nuts. Kills everything. Card nuts. <laughs> Uh, maybe white is one of the safest first picks, right? Yeah. Yeah, Boros good, Selesnya good, right? Just yeah. Yeah, Selesnya has turned out to be a lot better than people originally thought. Mm-hmm. Golgari is still god awful. Yeah. As long as you get a couple prey pawns in Selesnya, so you can pick out flyers. Yeah. yeah. You're good. Flyers are your problem. Yeah. Just get prey pawns and you're okay. Yeah. It's like, what good reach dudes do you have? The no. one four. That card sucks. Yeah. That's like. Look, there are times where we don't if even you get a if you get a number of crawl harpooners, you're good. Yeah, crawl okay. harpooner is actually yeah. a bomb in this. I always format. forget it has reach, but it yeah. fights flyers and it has reach. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, no, that card is a bomb in this format. It kills Baneslayer. Mm-hmm. Yes, it does. It's a clean answer to Baneslayer, and then blocks another flyer. <laughs> <laughs> Damn healer hawk, <laughs> warping my whole game plan around everything. <laughs> but for real, no, that card's just a bomb, like mm-hmm. a strict bomb. I would go into green for that card. I think it's very good. Going into green in 2018. Would, yeah, no, what yikes. a whirl. Yeah, huge yikes. <laughs> I mean, I would also be tempted to first pick a circuitous route and just go for it. Circuitous route? Whatever, dude. I still don't know how to pronounce it. Circuitous. Right? I Is haven't that... I haven't read the full word yet because reading's impossible. I would be able to tell you how to pronounce it if I actually sat around to look at it, but looking at cards. Who has time for that? I don't know. I'm a busy guy. Yeah. But uh I would go all in on that card, you know, because why not? That's five. You know, if everyone else can't borrow, play five color guild summit. Yep. 
if everyone else can't borrow us, then we race in for the most value. I'm, I'll take that bet, you know? Sign me up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sign me the F up. <laughs> All right. So let's jump a little bit to modern. We can briefly talk about GP Atlanta. It's won by Band Spirits uh, again. Yeah, that deck, real deal. Two modern GPs in a row. It's finally proving itself. Yeah. To <laughs> non-Europeans. Yeah. Yeah, all the, Euro, all the European players knew. Yeah. Honestly, I don't think it's as good against the format as a whole as something like humans, but I think it's good against humans, which is why it does so well. Yeah, and it's still okay against everything else, too. Yeah. I think it's just a strong hate bears deck. Yeah. Man, the rise of hate bears in modern, you know, just sort of, sort of the story of the past year, right? Mm-hmm. That the format has just been dominated by these really proactive decks with extremely disruptive game plans. 2018, just a year of active hate groups. <laughs> 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 they can just, yeah, they can just shut down what you're doing, you know? Harass, harass your game plan. Are you guys referring to something? No. <laughs> no? Just the decks. We're just Canadians. Yeah, just oh yeah, I, <laughs> the modern archetypes, you know. <laughs> so that the town's getting some coffee. <laughs> but yeah, I just I just want to give a shout out to my boy playing Tron, who smashed, absolutely destroyed Storm on camera in the fi- the final round of Swiss on camera. Just taking Storm out, not behind, a good behind the bars, giving a good old beat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thought seizes in the board of the Tron deck, yeah. which you said you were a big fan of. Big fan, and probably the reason he beat Storm. Am I correct? I would assume so. I assume otherwise he gets Carl rumpled. Uh, it's yeah, it's not very good for you. It's not good, but with thought seize, anything is possible. Anything is possible. But <laughs> instead of thought seize into Goyf, we out here thought seize into Karn. <laughs> 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 nice Goyf, thought seize Karn. <laughs> That's, that's the mid range deck I'm trying to be. Yeah. That is this dude just doing an honest man's work, thought yeah. seasoning into Karn and Mog and people. Thought, yeah, thought sees Dark yeah. Confidant. Yeah, all right, buddy. Thought sees Karn. Just the hero we need. God. Yeah, the deck yeah. everyone loves. You love to see it. Trom top baiting another the, not, <laughs> Yeah, not, you know, but it was dead. Tron, I mean, I don't know how he did it. Well, yeah, Storm, Storm, Assassin's yeah, Storm can't play Assassin's Trophy. So, uh, yeah. yeah. But I mean, everyone everyone else is playing Assassin's Trophy you now. Can't kill so. what is already dead. Yeah. And on Mord Ego, too, I don't know how he is dead. They never die. Well, those cards cost two and three, <sighs> and you can Thought Seize on turn one wow. and then wait a few turns and then card them. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> Clean. <laughs> I just had to get that in there. Yeah. But we also saw Ironworks put two copies in the top eight. Yeah. Deck's still around. Deck's yeah, Deck's nuts. Stick. I said at the last tournament when it didn't show up, I said I even said, what? Where'd it go? You know, <laughs> yeah. like I don't think decks have really fully adjusted to beat it. I still think it's a deck that should come out and collect some pelts. I mean, it it lost in the finals again to a deck that has Stony Silence. Shocker. Yeah. That's yeah, that's how and it, rest in peace. Yeah, the Spirits yeah. deck has... And that's, I think, the, the reason probably we're seeing Spirits win these is instead of humans. Yeah. Is that Stony Songs rest in peace that humans can't play. Yeah. Or won't. They can play them. They can. They would, ooh, it's a tough time casting it's, them. Yeah, you're, <laughs> you're going to have a, a difficult time there. Um, but yeah. Maybe there's the argument they have to, going forward, change their mana base and change it a little bit and go ban humans and just play a ban humans deck. You could. And change the mana base to gain access to those sideboard cards because they are just so important for certain matchups. And they just don't have access. And mod- modern, as we know, is a, is a sideboard game format. Yeah. I mean, all formats, really, but hey. I guess, I guess then the Apparently, except for limited. <laughs> yeah. Until we, you know. I guess then the question, We're though, is... the minds of our yeah. listeners. <laughs> are your Bant humans better than your Bant spirits? Because that's the draw of humans, right? Is that you just get the best of five colors? Yeah, you yeah. get your Mantis Riders and your Kite Silver Freebooters, and you get uh, that losing Mantis Riders is a huge problem. Losing Freeboot, yeah, I just don't know if they can get away with changing it. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm just saying yeah. that humans might be better against the field, but Bant Spirits is better against the combo be- decks. the better decks in modern. Yeah, Dredge Vine also top eight. It has a better matchup there. You know. Yeah, yeah. Having the sideboard cards, um, Hardened Scales also top eight. Yep. It has a way better, way better matchup. Because yeah. humans can't win that yeah. matchup. Nope. <laughs> but your ass can't. <laughs> Not in a million years, but nope. spirits can. Spirits and again, can. this is just an access to sideboard thing. Mm-hmm. You know, so I, I think I don't know enough about humans. So, you know, 
um, take this as for what you will. Yeah, exactly. Um, but I, th- I think from what I've seen, it's possible to change things so that they have a wider access to cyborg cards, which might change the future of the deck. I think they might have to, they have to do something. Yeah. You know, because those, those impactful cyborg cards are so necessary. I agree. So we'll see what happens. Or people just play spirits because it's just better as a sort of hate hate deck, you know? I mean, it, it's won two GPs in a row and the GP before that, it finished second. Yeah. Deck's not going anywhere. It's very good. Yeah, deck's nuts. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, popping back to standard uh, with the PT this weekend. Uh, a lot of people really hype on standard now. Format's fantastic. Could do a whole bunch of stuff. Um, we usually do some predictions leading into the Pro Tour. Uh, I don't know if you guys thought about it a lot, but I haven't really put a ton of thought into it. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I think Jess guys po- might be poised to have a bit of a rough weekend. Um, I think people are definitely going to be gunning for it. I think if you're going to play Jess guy this weekend, you don't want to be playing the Azor's Gateway version. I agree with that. Why? Uh, it it just has a huge target on its back, and people know what you're doing. And um, yeah, I'm just I'm like I agree. I'm just looking for the specific of what they can do to hate you out. Or I mean, you're playing like you have more dead cards in your deck game one, right? So as soon as you have a gateway, you have less answers. They can just start dumping their hand, playing more aggressively. Like you're gonna deal with your they're going to deal with your game plan less effectively because they're spending time to rummage or whatever. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a problem with the deck. I also think that any game you could have won with Explosion and a flipped gateway, you could have just won with Teferi. Yeah. If you're in the position where you're just flipping gateway and killing them, like Teferi probably also would have won the game. You could have just played a Teferi and protected it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. I think that's the issue for me is that. And then, yeah, like you said, that you lose answers. Yeah. Like, I think it's just. I, I just don't really see. I guess the appeal was that it has a good control mirror. But yeah, being able to in game one, for yeah, sure. Game one. Game, being able to cycle through cards that are dead is big. Yeah, that's a huge part of it. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I think I don't. Yeah, I think it's just too slow. Like if red is going to be more popular, which I think it will, and Drake's like you just if Drake's like has a good turn, you need to have an answer up. If red's like just fast, like you just can't sit around casting gateways and activating them and. Trying to cobble together some combo finish as you're getting smacked. Mm-hmm. So I think I think Green Black is actually poised to have a pretty good weekend this weekend if people are smart enough to bring four Wild Growth, growth Walkers in their seventy five uh, cards. Great versus Mono Red, and it's actually really good versus Jeskai as well. Um, just getting out of Clarion range fast. Yeah, it just gets out of Clarion range immediately, and then they can't really deal with it. Um, it's been like I I usually sideboard up to four and just give them the beat down. Yeah, it's been like very good. No, yeah, when I yeah when, when I play, I do the same thing. Yeah, um, but yeah, I think I think Green Black is probably poised to have a bit of a better weekend than it did and the double standard GP. Um, Drake's though, Drake's is probably going to be heavily played, but it's it's hard to say. Mm, I'm not sure if that deck is actually that played. No. I can't tell yet if it's like actually good enough. But I guess, I don't know. I want to say, I think a copy top eights. One copy? I think one or two. That's it, though. Because I think this is a tournament where Mono Red shows up and pushes Drake's out of a lot of top eight contention. Like, I bet Drake still does well. I bet you see a lot of 7 3 Drake lists or 7 or 6 4 Drake lists that lo- took two or three losses to Mono Red. And then lost yeah. to control in their other matchups. Yeah. You know what I mean? They beat Green Black every round, but they lost to those matchups, I think. I think that's probably what happens. So I think it's the deck that has an okay matchup there. And maybe it's Mono Red. Maybe it's Mono Red has just a good matchup across the board. Yeah. I do I do think we'll see a couple of top eight uh mono red decks. Yeah, I agree. Experimental Frenzy is just so degenerately good. Yeah. Yeah. That deck that deck's just like so good, and people have been skimping out on cards for it more and more. And man, you disrespect mono red, and it's gonna get you. I don't know, it's like weird environment now that I think about it going into this pro tour of sort of every weekend over the past three weeks has been kind of a different deck featured doing well. And 
after it does well, people kind of figure out how to fight against it. People figure out what it's bad or good good matchups are. And then now we're in this position where like everyone knows mono red is good, but mono red just it's easy to hate red. It's an aggressive strategy. Those answers have been there. Drakes did well, but now people know how to hate Drakes. Green black is obviously powerful, but it had a weekend where it got hated out. Control you can hate by playing aggressive, but like it's chilling its answers. Now it feels like this massive game of rock paper. Like it's not clear what will be the most popular or what people will um, choose to hate the most. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like this, this it's, like a, it's a meta game. Dep- yeah, it's a meta game dependent, you know, matchup, right? I talked about this actually maybe week one, right? And yeah, yeah. Didn't I say it? I was like, this format will end up being a matchup dependent format that your win rate is based on just wow, your pairings. Like, yeah, you're going to have good matchups across the board in certain ways. There's not one deck where you just is a tier, the only tier one deck. That's just not going to happen. Yeah, in this format. You know, I- and it's just the access to colors. I said this on the podcast. And he said this to multiple in group, like in like group yeah. chats. I was like ranting about this that. This format just ends up heavily matchup dependent with a bunch of tier one decks. No, I yeah, I agree with that. But I think there's been other formats like that where you can tell sort of what phase of the format you're in. Like it was Green Black's weekend, oh, so yeah, the no, next no. weekend it's going to be like this deck. And you could kind of predict the, how it was going to cycle. I'm yeah. saying that right now it feels like I just don't know. Well, no, because there's a clear cycle in the other formats. Yeah. This is just, they're all viable okay. if people show up with X, but there's not a progression. Okay. The other ones have a sort of linear construction of a metagame, right? Where oh, things keep getting bigger, like the mid-range decks are going bigger and bigger, so now this is good, right? Mm-hmm. Then, and then, you know, now the aggressive decks are good, so these decks are better again, these more lower-to-the-ground mid-range decks. And then, then those do well, so then people have to play these bigger arms race mid-range decks, and then control does well because of that, because mm-hmm. I'm preying on them, right? But I mean, we're talking about all these decks, we haven't even mentioned, like, Red White Angels could show up and just smash everyone. Yeah, true. Tokens could show up and just smash. Oh, yeah, tokens we haven't talked about. I feel like there's going to be... Because there isn't a rock, paper, scissors, just a bunch of yeah, good yeah. decks that are good against certain matchups. And not, it's just a... Yeah. I feel like Charter Course is underplayed outside of the Drake's deck. Agreed. Deckard and, nuts. Yeah. So transitioning a bit from like these known like good decks that could all do well, like what's an unknown deck? I think that like might crop up. I think it's going to be some like blue X, maybe blue green, blue something, blue black aggro deck featuring Charter Course just out of nowhere. Yeah, maybe bug deck with Charter Course. Yeah, that's my prediction for like sleeper card that shows up in a weird deck. Jeskai Drakes. It's been a couple five O's, right? There's been like different weird Jeskai Drake decks. Well, there's been like Jeskai control decks playing play Drake. No, but Drake, there's also yeah. been like the aggro versions. I think I've seen. Yeah. Yeah, I think they're playing Clarion <laughs> because they're Drakes. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> and they just hit you too. Kill your board, gain ten. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Oh, and then your Arclight Phoenix comes back. Yeah. At the beginning of combat, after you cast Clarion. Yeah. That is a combo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Phil sent me a list that I think it was Phil. Someone sent me a five zero list of Jeskai that was playing. Yeah, it's like a Drake deck, basically. Hmm. With like Clarion and a few other cards. Cool. Yeah. I mean, that could do well. Yeah. Who knows? It's Yeah, it's really... This is a Pro Tour where I have no idea. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if some bug mid-range deck did well because it has, you know, four Wild Growth Walker main, has its like mono-red matchup short up, and then just has four negates in the the board. And, you know, has a good control matchup. How much Nullhide Ferrix do you think we see? Zero. Yeah. No, I mean... Yeah. Uh, I'm willing to say zero. In the top eight? Zero. Top eight zero, you sure? Because Chupa Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, dude, it's hexproof though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> or like any other removal spells, you know, just every removal spell. Yeah. The fact that like the explorer guys just block it, and then you know when they have six mana, they just Chupa it, whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just yeah, I don't know. I don't think you want to play that. Like card. those, I just mean mono green though. In general, can't be Chupa Cabra. Not just like. Yeah, I agree with that. Like Galta gets Chupa Cabra, right? Like, it does. Everything that matters in their deck, except for Vine Mare. But the problem is Vine Mirror doesn't attack past the three two Merfolk branch walker. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Card sucks. Yeah. Vine Mirror, I'm glad Vine Mirror isn't well positioned. Feels good, man. Same. Feels real good. Definitely Get these Vine Mares out of here. <laughs> no Vine Mares keeping you up at night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what other yeah. like sweet card is in standard that hasn't been seeing play? No, they all have been seeing play. It's just the it's just a fact of the mana. No, uh, it looks like Rivers Rebuke hasn't been seeing play. Oh, yeah, There's got to be a couple sweet. sweet ones that like just aren't aren't getting respected. Can someone play a sweet uh, Deep Root Champion deck? Yeah, see? Merfolk. That could be a sleeper. No, no, no. Isn't Deep no. Root Champion the one that whenever you cast a non-creature spell? Oh, that one. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, put a plus one, plus yeah, one yeah, counter yeah. on it? Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, that deck. So like a rug, rug that play that card in Drakes. Oh my Ooh. lord! <laughs> play three spells for a turn. You get back a Drake, and now you get a four four. That's, That's nuts. nuts, right? This could be the Charter Course deck. Right. Yeah. There you go. I don't think you have the mana no, for that, no. but eventually we will. We will. And we'll get you. Yeah. No, that I bet that will be a thing. I I do rug actually. Drakes with that yeah, card. I for sure. would be shocked if that if that is not a deck. You know, come the mana availability when we have Simic and Gruel lands, like I'll, there's just no way that's not a deck. The mana is no. perfect. Yeah, yeah. The okay. standard right now is just so limited by its mana, but within the five colors, like I wouldn't be surprised if a Grixis Control deck does well. I wouldn't be surprised at all. Like Grixis Fake News, would you be surprised if that deck came out and just started winning everything? Wouldn't yeah. be surprised at all. Disinformation campaign's a good card. This card's mm-hmm. obnoxious. Bolus yeah. is Bolus is just ridiculous. You cast that card recently? No. <laughs> Had a cast against you? Yeah, yeah. Sucks, right? Man, I just auto two for one here. Like, there's no good way out of it. That's fine. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't lost one. I cast them, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> I there's not a lot of bolus phone around. No, no, you never you never see it. No. I think it's, it's like Ben Moyer and I. Are like the only guys out here just casting four bolts in our decks and just constantly winning with it. I think the green black decks can shrug it off a lot more easily too. Because if you troop cobra it or if you Vivian it, then it's just a one for one. That's fine. Yeah, I'm saying it's fine, but it's fine for both of you. Yeah. yeah. So. Oh no, but I like never play it until I have. I don't just play it on four unless I have like an insane follow up. Hmm. You know what I mean? Like my follow up then, if they play that, is like you're you're on an empty board by the troop cobra, and I'll just reborn you or play a planeswalker. Okay. Right. And then if not, I'll wait until I have negate or disdainful stroke up with it so that you don't get me like that. Fair. And then you lose. Easy. <laughs> Figured it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I tried and to also play. the fake news, the fake news version is very good at making sure that, you know, you don't have a clean answer to the bolus. And his yeah, cards. disinformation campaigns allows you to just grind your opponent down to top deck mode. Well, it's also playing Thought or Azure, right? Yeah. So Man, all these decks playing Thought Thought or Azure. Cam told me it'd be unplayable. Yeah, well, none of those decks are doing well, so <laughs> it's just Ben and I again. It's not like we're having real results with it, so Cam might be right. But Ben's been playing like a hilarious version of Grixis too. He's also been playing a... I think it's... it's I played some games with it. It's actually good. He's been playing um, Thought or Azure and a Legion War Boss Grixis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was telling me about this. Dude, it's actually so funny. You just like, if you're on the play, right? You just, all right, like, Thought of or whatever, that's going to stop my Legion War Boss and then War Boss you. And then from there, just like, right, contempt that, like, <laughs> counter that. Like, yeah, it makes sense. And then you just die. Like, you just, you know, yeah. just kills you in the interim of you countering things, or, you know, casting removal spells. It's really dumb. <laughs> but it, it's some dog shit, but like, it's pretty good. Well, I don't War, know. Warboss, another card with potential that hasn't been seeing a lot of play. Yeah, Warboss just hasn't been getting much love. That's a card I could see seeing. Uh, it just, it's just so bad versus green black. Yeah, that's why. It just can't ever attack. Mm-hmm. Gets brick walled by their entire deck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's the issue. Yeah, that is the issue. If they can find a way around that, though, to make the deck good, you know? Yeah. I'm curious if we'll see any kind of unique adaptations to tokens as well, you know? I wouldn't be surprised to see tokens playing Dawn of Hope in the main. Yeah. Because that card is just an incredible way to grind through multiple decks. Control decks hate it. How much can tokens (laughs) dilute its plan and like (laughs) still be called tokens? Because like, so they either get to go Abzan or Naya, right? Yeah. Well, you just put like Aurelia's in your tokens list. That sounds great. (laughs) (laughs) I'm listening. Wait, we put Legion Warboss in here too. Right? And then like... That's a token. tokens. Yeah, you like... And then you sideboard in the copies of Divine Visitation plus Legion Warboss. Mm-hmm. That, sir, is a combo. <laughs> yeah. A- that is a two-card combo. Because you play combo. your uh, Legion's Landing. You make a 1-1 one, one vampire. But you got Aurelia here to mentor it up. Make it a huge whatever Vigilance So I, I actually don't think that is an unreasonable thing to do because the mana's good. It's fine mm-hmm. in Naya. And one of the problems with the tokens deck is... When you sort of feel like your board stalled with just a couple one ones, mm-hmm. you know, or two twos because you played a locks on, but it, it dies and then you're stuck with a couple two twos that much. Aurelia helps you push through and gives you some oomph, right? Aurelia can win on its own. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see tokens adapt that stra- uh, adapt that to that strategy of, of bigger, heavier hitter, hitters, but still playing the early tokens game. Also, so Aurelia like notoriously hard to kill. Can't get justice right. Can't get a bunch of stuff. 
can get fight with fired unless you cast a loxodon with it. Yeah. That's good with Loxodon. Then it's really difficult to kill. You can't get connived then. Also, just, just the light, on everything. The, light, the, the more life you would gain off a of Legion's Landing token versus Mono Red because of Aurelia is a big deal. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're playing tokens, you can just play Justice Strikes Ooh. and Conclave Tribunal. So your removal's good. You can go a little more mid rangey. You probably cut something like um, Sapperling Migration. Mm-hmm. You know, you maybe only play three Amaras. You know, you're not all in, right? You have an early tokens game, but then you have a big late game of. You know, yeah, Aurelia. Like, I don't even know if you want locks it on at that point. And Mara too is another card that like you want to keep attacking with to make tokens, but like oftentimes starts gets or starts getting brick walled. That Aurelia also forces no, she through. gives a vigilance, huge rip. Right, but <laughs> no, you like pump Aurelia and mentor. Oh, onto, you mentor, uh, yeah, 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 Amara, oh, yeah. But you can't pump Amara; it's a beating. Yeah, you know, you, you win some. <laughs> I, want so. all, <laughs> yeah, I want it all. I want it all. But uh, yeah, I could see them making an adaptation like that. Um, you know, if you have two Legion Warbass out, you can make the two tokens and then mm-hmm. instead of letting them suicide in, use them to march. Ooh. <laughs> that is a, another combo. Yeah, a lot of combos. But uh, I think Dawn of <laughs> Hope is like one of the big ways in which the deck can fight the grindy game. I played a bit more of the deck recently just for fun and I put two Dawn of Hope's main. That card nuts. Playing versus control, yeah. I was like, oh man, I'm so dead. And then I drew a Donna Hope and I played something, they countered it, and I was like, sucker, and like played the two men at Donna Hope, and I was like, they're so dead. And they they were. Yeah, if you have time, it just buries them. Yep. You just need time. Mm-hmm. So yeah. And yeah, maybe that's an interesting way the deck can adapt, right? Having Justice yeah. Strike is pretty cool for them. Yeah. Gets to some problematic creatures out of the way. But what about Molder Hulk? Mm. Don't think it's quite there. Yeah, I agree. I think it's okay in the when Green Black was a less powerful mirror. When yeah. Green Black decks didn't play all the planeswalkers and powerful heavy hitters like Vraska Six. Yeah. When they were just a good kind of junky explore deck, I think it was better. But now I think it's a worse matchup because their yeah. top end is just so much more threatening now than yeah. it used to be. Yeah. Mulder Hulk's fine and I sweet and I like that card, but I don't think that's where you want to be. Yeah. Agree with that. Um, yeah. Some cool like Drake innovations though from the mocks uh, this weekend. I don't know if you guys checked that out, but uh, still kind of when it comes to Drakes, people are still bouncing back and forth between Electromancer versions or eight Drake versions. Yeah. Um, some people just kind of jammed them both together. That's like what I've see, been. That's what I've been doing. See Pascal's deck. Uh, he jammed it together: two Electromancers, two Enigma Drakes. Uh, I love this sideboard plan though with Sarkins. That's pretty dope. Yeah, Sarkin's actually really good in the sideboard for Drake's. Yeah. Yeah, like, um, I really like this list. I also like, you have to have multiple Enigmas in your sideboards, in my opinion, if you're playing blue-red of any kind. Yep. Card just... Unbelievable. <laughs> fathomably good. Uh, just disgustingly good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe someone will show up with Grixis Dragons and do well Grixis with the PT. Dragons. I wouldn't be surprised by that, actually. That deck, Sarkin, when you see it played, it does a lot of work. Yeah. I do like this deck as a like a the amalgamation of both kind of strategies into one. Mm-hmm. I think something like this is poised to have a good weekend. Yeah, I agree. I think Drake's yeah. is just a proactive deck that has free wins. I think that's one of the reasons you choose this deck for a pro tour. It has free yeah. wins, and if you know how to play it, it feels like it unlocks more of the power level of the deck. Yeah. So this is a deck. I think that the more time you spend with it. You know what to use removal on, when to cast spells. Like all these things matter so much for a deck that requires you on occasion to cast three spells in a turn. And there's not a lot of margin for error, but there's also margin for there is margin for sort of maneuvering how you use your spells and thinking about you know percentages for outs and what you can hope to get out of a out of a Phoenix. So this is a deck that if you get a ton of reps in, I think it can do really well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It'll be cool to see. Like it's it's hard to predict. Yeah, this is a tough pro tour. I think I want to say like this is an oddball chance, obviously, but I want to see Knight of Autumn have a good tournament. Yeah, of I course. think in the Our Absent one deck. Card. Yeah, well, no, and yeah. I also think in the Absent deck, it's just so good. That, I I really do think that Absent is very well positioned right now. I agree. Like having Knight of Autumn in your main deck gives you just so much more game against big players in the the field right now. Yeah, July's I mean, great. Sometimes you're, you know, control player. You're on the play. You play land, land yeah. something. They play a search for Escanta, and you get it. You get to play the night, and they just are furious. Yeah. Oh, well, tags up Eldest Reborns. 
Tag good against you know frenzies. frenzies, the huge one. Yeah. Tags experimental frenzy gains life later. If people are playing Azor's Gateway, gets that. Yeah. Gets Conclave Tribunal. Gets History of Benalia. Man, what doesn't this card gains get? life versus Drakes? And it's just, yeah. or uh, more importantly, perhaps it's just a four power guy. Yeah. It can attack. Yeah. Um, that Which card, against Drakes game one, you just need to attack. You got to get him. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think the green black should splash. Actually, it's funny that I think a lot of the adaptations we're talking about for decks are the two color decks adapting a third color or a different sort of approach. And with the standard format the way it is, so wide open, the mana is so good. This is an easy solution. Yeah, and with your explore the explore package in the green black deck, splashing is just easy, 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 easy. easy. Yeah, like you bug or absent. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Especially, you know, if you're not, even if you're not playing the Explorer, but the sort of week one and two decks where everyone was playing District Guide, good too. No yeah. problem. Yeah. You know, playing your third color, not a problem. Yep. Real easy. Um, so that helps a lot. And I, yeah, I I have also been playing Green Black, but I've been playing Abzan actually, just basically only on on online. Yeah. And I don't think I can go back now that I've switched to having the white access to white cards. I haven't. Yeah, it just, I always win the mirror. Yeah. It always feels like I win the mirror. Yeah, well, that's the thing. You win the mirror, you have a lot more game against um, the other these other decks in the format because of the white cards, and then in one of your worst matchups, the Drake's deck, you got access to Seal Away post board, which just helps so much. Yeah, it's unreal. Where the other green-black decks are just kind of hoping to get under them. Yeah, somehow. even the even the life game from Night of Autumn can't really be understated in the games where I'm, you know, I boarded into a... I don't know, blood fast in the green black mirrors, right? Normally it's a little risky sometimes, but I'm like, well, I can get this life back later if I need. Like it just yeah. lets you grind out so much. Yeah. Being able to answer Elders from Warren is so big. Um, just, yeah, generic stuff that comes up. Yeah. yeah. I do think Abzan is a very good place to be right now. I agree. But I'm curious if people will try out Bug as well, you know, just for the counter magic in the board, for the grindier cards, right? Like, mm-hmm. For sideboard cards that are probably good sideboard cards, like Connive Concoct, which can get a bunch of problematic things, right? It can get Aurelia's. It can steal Wild Growth Walkers in the Green Black Mirror. Yep. And then just start growing them, right? That's, I don't know, to me that's a lot. And can just reanimate a Chupacabra to kill a problematic creature. Like Bug has a lot of options that opens up sideboard slots that I think can be really strong that we're kind of forgetting about almost. You know what I mean? My friend of ours has been playing Bug locally. With, I think the only main deck blue card is like a Muldrotha or two. Yeah. Which just cracks the mirror wide open. If I, you, I, lost, uh, I lost. If you untap with it. Yeah, I lost the mirror to him because he untapped. And then, yeah, like negates and stuff in the board. Yeah. I untapped with one and I just. Yeah. You can, can, you can never win. Yeah. He just popped off on me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, negates in the board, which I think it maybe is better as Disdainful Stroke, actually, or a split of them. Because I think if you're playing the green black mirror, Disdainful Stroke's nuts. Oh, yeah. Nuts. Having access to a card is insane. Just leaving up two men is easy. They're not going to bring in duress versus you. I would never bring in duress in the mirror ever. Nope. Um, but I would bring in disdainful strokes if I had access. I mean, stopping Vraska six for two mana, I'm in. Yeah. Even just stopping a Chupacabra from killing something, maybe stopping a Vivian. Right. Yeah. Like it's stopping the Planeswalkers or an Eldest Reborn is the most important thing, right? Yeah. Golgari Fine Broker. Right. Like <laughs> you want a disdainful stroke that. So I could see Bug doing well, actually, just with access to strokes. It'll be really interesting to see if the pros came to the decision that um, moving into a third color is the right place to be. For green-black? For green-black, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the the thing is they don't need to either because the game one plan of green-black is also just so good. Yeah, it's so proactive. You don't you don't have to, but I think the benefits outweigh the costs. Agreed. I think the costs are basically non-existent. Yeah. Even if you're just doing it for sideboard cards, I think at this point, you know, you should be. Mm-hmm. I think that the meta is known enough that, and the, there aren't exactly the answers we need in specifically green black to deal with something like Phoenix. Yep. Um, and the mirror that you want the third color for breaking the mirror or having impactful cards that are both for the mirror and for control, yep. which is something like disdainful stroke or, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I agree. Actually, I think the the way forward is something along these lines. Yeah. What so, its exact numbers are, I don't I don't know yet, but I've been testing a lot of different versions and experimenting, and I think it's been better for me. Yeah. 
I was just going to ask if I had been playing green, black, and paper and uh, needed to pick up some shock lands or some check lands to splash a third color. Do you know anywhere I could go get some? Well, let me tell you. Wizardtower.com. Check them out for all your magic cycle needs. Great sponsor to this podcast. <laughs> Great store here in Ottawa. Wizardtower.com. Uh, water went right? down the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> wrong hole. Man, waited a long time for that ad spot. Yeah, that was a late one. Yeah, I was going to do one earlier, but... I got sidetracked. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So to wrap this thing up, let's give some predictions. What do we think is going to top eight this weekend? We have eight slots. Eight slots. Yeah. Uh, two green, black. I'm going to give okay. two control decks. I don't know what flavor, but two control. It's got to just be Jeskai, right? Uh, someone might like play I, Esper. I, th- I, I could see on Esper. I could see like a Jeskai and an Esper. Yeah. I'd lock that in yeah. as a prediction. Okay. Yeah. Um, One or two mono red. I want to say one mono red, one Drake. One mono red, one Drake. So we have two decks left. Mm, maybe a second mono red. <laughs> <laughs> and then Abs and Knights <laughs> with a Midnight Reaper. Abs and Knights. With Midnight Reaper, Knight of Autumn, the eight two drop Knights, and four a Johnny. <laughs> Just like. And then Dauntless Bodyguard, four. And then, I don't know, some other jet, Legion Landing. Yeah. That's, and then just going to be our throwaway. And throw they, just away. One, two, <laughs> they just one, two drop, three drop mm-hmm. you. Suit them up with the Johnny. Get you. The, this is our throwaway pick? Abs and Knights, dude. You uh, heard it here first. I think Mid- you just... Four, you would, what, you, you clown it on the deck that's playing four Midnight Reapers, man? I'm fine leaving like, a, night. <laughs> a wild card. It's either going to be Abs and Knights or it's going to be... What's well, the like, guy who's six old limited and brought like yeah. cards I own? Yeah, yeah exactly. Or it's going to be like... Some like wacky brew that like they conv- it's gonna be like the equivalent of blue green Karn. It's gonna or be ra- like Rainbow Lich. It's gonna be like yeah, Rainbow Lich or like Karn Traxos or like oh yeah, blue uh, black story time with Traxos or just like a generic like Watsy's Future Future League blue green Merfolk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Merfolk, right? Like you people, think the throwaway vote is Merfolk? I yeah, there's a bunch of green that. black in control and they just dive down and draw cards with Kumena and like make their guys unblockable oh, and kill the green black players. Mono blue. Oh yeah, mono blue, mono blue flying yeah, okay, man is one mind. of the top eight. You think that, so? Yeah, that's the last slot. Yeah, that's a lot. That's the that's the eighth card. You think or the so? Eighth deck. Yeah, mono blue. It almost won a GP last weekend. Yeah, we got yeah, there. Yeah, I know, but I don't. But, uh, I don't. I don't. We don't think need to throw away. It's uh, mono blue. I don't think it's yeah because it's obviously abs and knights, dude. Yeah. And it doesn't. So mono blue top eights, and it only puts in one copy, not because of a lack of power, but because of a lack of popularity and this sort of like lack of faith that you're showing here, Stelly. <laughs> what are you going to block one of the two drop knights with your dumb Merfolk branch walker? Get first struck. <laughs> God, got me. <laughs> yeah, then I'll just make them big with a Johnny. Yeah. I don't know how I'll ever beat that. Mm, maybe Boros Angels top eight. Sorry, Wait, but... you can't even chew Picabra the white one. Yeah, exactly. You're that dog right. doesn't matter how hungry he is. Stay don't, outside. Don't know how I ever beat that. Deck. You have no spells that kill it. Not Literally. Vivian doesn't been, kill it. Yeah, it doesn't fly. You have actually just dominated nothing. on the ground riding a horse. A Johnny makes it huge. You can't ever block. Can't, the dog can't reach to bite him because he's on a horse. Yeah. Thank God I have one, three guys that grow every time I explore. Yeah, we can't beat them. They can kill those. No, no, we're never beating that card, actually. (laughs) (laughs) That's a huge rip. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Wait, but people have been cutting that card. Yeah. Abs and Knights, Future Standard. (laughs) Uh, Actually, no, but I have no idea. I would like to see more Midnight Reapers. I think that there's an argument. Uh, The mana was better. I would say a black-white aggro deck with Midnight Reapers. Like it's basically white, like a mono a white weenie deck, mm-hmm. splashing mana reaper. I could see that deck doing well next format when it has the mana. Yep, I agree. Esper Knights. So you might it. actually be fine doing it in Knights now because you get wait unclaimed territory. Unclaimed territory is what I was gonna say. Yeah, wait. You still wait, only wait. have <laughs> wait, isolated <laughs> chapel. Wait, but the mana still sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Make uh, casting a Johnny a bit rough. Yeah. How are you supposed to cast your history banalias? Just get lucky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Just, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Who knows, my guy? That's the only way. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I think it's just a kind of smattering of what we have now and then maybe one unique or two new u- unique brews. But again, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see sort of people show up with wacky mid-range decks, right? Or sort of Grixis Dragons, like decks like that and do well. And top eight or top 16, you know, I, I bet the top 32 has a bunch of like, yeah, you know, abs and nights, throwaway decks, like mono blue flying men, you know, half. Seven three performances. They don't necessarily top eight, yeah. But in the standard performances of the ten rounds of standard, I think the seven three diversity is very high. I don't think it's like last pro tour where all the eight two and nine one decks were mono red. Mm. Yeah, 
you know, I don't think we see that. I got a sweet prediction for like the round one or two feature match of standard. Okay. It's going to be some reanimator deck making the tulpas, <laughs> making the commas, making it's just going to be surveilling and trying to concoct. Oh, dinos. wait. What? The ramp deck's top eighting. You think so? Yeah. Yeah, that deck plays the comma. <laughs> that card's busted. Okay, is that our throwaway pick? That, no, that's not my throwaway. I'm locking that in. <laughs> okay. I'm putting bets on this. All not right. pie level bets. <laughs> like I'm not putting a pie on this one, but like okay. I I man, ramp deck, top eight. <laughs> Easy, clean, lock. All right. Lock it in. I feel like they yeah, they could top eight <laughs> if they six so limited, so We're that lo- they can give a couple rounds in standard to just like only drawing ramp cards. Yeah, exactly. Easy. That's the six O limited. Gotta do it it's the six O limited ramp your way into top eight. Yeah. Ramped my way here on the back of Ramp my your way straight through the quarters and then just fizzle in the semis. Yeah, just do nothing and die. Yeah. Yeah. Hype. Can't wait. I'm going to be Cam will be in Seattle. Steli will be working. Most certainly. I will be home alone the following Saturday. I have something to do in the morning. Um, but I'll be home Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday. Live chat in the Discord. <laughs> Yelling about stuff. I'm planning my whole weekend around watching the PT. Man, that sounds great. Can't wait. But Saturday, I got li- to come to it. But eh. uh, I'll be home for... I'm going to miss Limited on Saturday, but I'll catch Standard, hopefully. Oh, when's some of some. Can't wait. Come chat it up. <laughs> I was going to say with the squad, but just me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you all for joining the club this week. Make sure, as always, you check out wizardtower.com for all your magic single needs. Great sponsors of this podcast. Great articles on their website. Other great podcasts like The Commander's Brew. Give them a follow. They're great. Check them out. And uh, if you want to support us, you can find us now at on uh, Patreon. We have a Patreon at patreon.com slash DWC podcast. Becoming a patron gets you access to our Discord. Sweet little benefits. Our custom tokens just got the final sketches in the other day. They're looking sweet. Getting final finalized up this week. They're going to be awesome. Can't wait to ship them out. Nice patron bonus. You also get access to our pre-show chat, which we record every week before our episode. Except this week. Huge except, rip. Well, we did record it. We were 40 minutes into recording it when the power died, and we lost that one forever. So, sorry, patrons. There will be no pre-show this week, unfortunately. Thank God this episode didn't get lost to a power outage, though. Whew. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's not over yet. Gotta wrap okay, this hurry up, up, hurry up. Yeah, <laughs> hit, save, hit the save. <laughs> Hey, you can also find us on Twitter at DWC Podcast One or Facebook, the Disorganized Business Club Podcast. And however you listen to our show, whether it's on Podbean, iTunes, any podcast app, leave us a review, rate the podcast with your friends. Everything keeps this thing growing and bring it to new listeners. All right, we'll catch you all next Perfect week. Perfect, save it. <laughs> save it.